Hi guys. Let's uh, see now how the governor is modeled in the power factory. So the governor is the set of devices and control system that is responsible for controlling the power output, the active power output of a power plant. And let's also, let's also see how we can use study cases to uh, save results out of different uh, simulation in case we want to do some sensitivity analysis or comparison between different uh, situations in the system. So let's actually start by looking at uh, how the governor is uh, structured in Power Factory. So we have a fairly straightforward um, block diagram. So in this case, we see the block diagram for a steam turbine governor with fast valving uh, capability. So we have a series of blocks. So starting to reading from the left, we have the input actually, uh, the, the most important input is the frequency or rather the rotational speed of our uh, synchronous generator. And afterwards we have, uh, after the comparison with the reference rotational speed, we have the gain of the group controller. So the basic control system that makes sure that uh, the unit adjusts the power output according to uh, variation in the frequency in the system. And then we have other uh, uh, latencies or saturation or time constant that uh, are necessary to model uh, the dynamic of the actuators, so the valves that open and closes, and also the dynamics of the steam that is flowing through the pipes in the turbine. So in order to take in account that uh, power output won't change instantly because we have some uh, time constants that characterize our uh, mechanical and thermal process behind the generator. And the main output is actually the power that is uh, set on the generator shaft. So in the end, the power that uh, the electrical, uh, the synchronous machine will see on the axis. So let's now have a look at the modeling power factory. Let's start by the usual radial grid and uh, let's just use uh, the simple, uh, purely reactive uh, transformer and line type, uh, load control, voltage control on the load at one per unit, uh, 2H equal to 10 seconds. But let's just make one modification. So let's take the load step equal to 100%. So again, starting by 100 megawatts. So I just made a copy of the grid. We need only to change the load event and take it to 100%. And we can perform our simulation. Let's take it 20 seconds first. So what do we see after 20 seconds? We see that uh, we have, of course, a new uh, steady state frequency because our governor is working properly, even though we have a quite large power step. So the load is increasing quite a lot, but still we it's in the capability of the machine to compensate for that. But of course, the frequency is uh, dropping significantly down almost to 49 Hertz. Now, if you observe the steady state frequency, we see that the value is actually 49584. We may want to run it a bit further, let's say 50 seconds, just to make sure that uh, this is the final value. And we see that's pretty much it. So if we look at the slides and specifically at when we did the calculation, we would have expect to get a value that is 49.5. Why is that? That is because if we take the definition of the droop and how the droop is uh, relating frequency variation with power variation in our generator, we would have expected that for our 500 megawatt machine, given a 100 megawatt power variation and considering that our droop is 5%, we should have expected a 0.5 Hertz of frequency uh, drop, which is not actually what we are experiencing. So why is that? As always, we need to be careful on uh, how things are uh, modeled in our system and specifically how the governor is implemented in uh, Power Factory. So if we go down to the graphic of our uh, governor, we can actually see a bit better that uh, based on the frequency, so based on the speed right at the generator, the generated power set point is actually calculated on, uh, on the complex based, on the complex power 
of the generator, so on the 600 MVA. And then the power set to the generator is um, normalized according to the nominal power factor of the machine. So pretty much the droop value that we have wired into power factory actually would refer not to the nominal active power, but to the nominal apparent power. So actually here there should be an S and NOM, which is 600 uh, megavolt ampere. So if we want to replicate, the, we want to find again the situation where we have half a hertz of variation with a 5% droop, actually our load step should be 120 megavolt. So let's actually double check this in power factory. So let's go in our system, adjust the load step to 120%, rerun our simulation for 50 seconds, and we see that we get a nice and straight 49.5 Hz as we would expect. So that is working pretty fine. So now it makes perfectly sense with the uh, hand calculation. So let's now move uh, forward because now we want to also see uh, how we can leverage this quite useful tool, which is a study case, in order to analyze how the system would behave if we change the droop value and store the results without losing the previous simulation uh, results. So what we need to do now is to duplicate our uh, study case which we find here under the study case uh, subfolder. So we can just copy this study case, paste it here, rename with a proper naming. So we could call it case R01 and activate the new study case. And all the information that we have in the system, including all the plots that are already preloaded, will be transferred one-to-one uh, -one compared to the previous study case. But right now we have a new folder where we can save new uh, results. So let's, uh, let's actually uh, adjust the properties in our system. So let's change the governor value to 10%. So our governor is, the gain gets twice as much. Let's reperform the simulation and let's make sure that actually results variable are going to be stored in the new uh, all calculation file in the new study case that we created. So we reperform our analysis and we get our new result. And in this case, we of course experience, uh, let's say, a worse uh, frequency uh, in our system. And uh, the new value is actually 49 basically 49.0 Hz, which is what we'd expect because it's uh, we are deploying half of the reserve because the droop got twice as much. And so the intensity of the response got half of the original one. And so the steady state frequency, given that we have the same load step, will be um, lower. In this case, one Hz lower to the nominal frequency. So what we want to do now, we want to make uh, another study case and we want to duplicate our uh, power plant, connect the new machine next to the load, keeping both uh, droop to 0 0.1 and uh, dispatch the new machine to 50 megawatt and no reactive power production or oh, reactive power production equal to zero. So what we can do now is to let's get into a new study case. We deactivate, we make a copy, paste, and we can uh, rename this one and call it to gen. We activate the new study case and we make a, a copy of the synchronous machine. Actually, there was already an, an existing copy, so allow me just to uh, remake a new one. So we have the new machine, make sure that the voltage is not controlled because otherwise you would have a conflict with the existing, with the previous uh, synchronous machine. And then we need actually also to copy paste the composite because we need to equip 
the new machine with the new composite model. So let's just make a quick and dirty, otherwise remember that we would need to rename properly names of a generator and composite so that we avoid the confusion. We reinitialize our system, we see that we have 50 megawatt in both machines. Reperform our event, rerun our simulation and we get the results. And actually the final result is again, as in the first case, 49.5 Hertz. And this makes perfectly sense because we double the amount of generation, we double the amount of reserve. So even though both machines have twice as much the droop gain, that means half of the response, it's like in the previous case where we had just one machine, but with the twice, uh, twice as much in terms of response. But if we look closely, we actually see that the response of the machine gets a bit more uh, oscillatory. So it becomes interesting at this point actually to understand what both machines are doing in this uh, during the simulation. So we need to specify information. We need to save the information also of the second machine. So we need to define the results also for the new machine. So we can actually add a new plot where we have the new machine also displayed. At this point, we have to be careful also with uh, coloring of the different machines so that we avoid confusion. And we can do the same also for the uh, power. So we get a conventional unit one, the power is here. And again, we use a color that is according to the color of the other machine. And we can actually remove these two plots, which now are not really interesting for us. So now we can rerun the simulation because Power Factory now is saving the new results, but it needs to calculate the results for the new machine. And we can see the simulation. So the first thing we, we can see is that, of course, both machines have a steady state uh, response that is equal. So both are providing the same amount of reserve. Both are uh, experiencing the same frequency, steady state frequency at the end of the simulation. But something interesting is happening at the very beginning. So we, if we zoom in, in the first uh, second of the simulation, we can actually see that the two machines don't really respond in the same way. And actually the second machine, the one that is closer to the load, is providing most of the initial response. So why is that? So we basically have this amplitude of power step compared to the other machine that is providing just this little. The response depends actually on how electrically distant the, the machine is. So specifically the first generator, the conventional unit, the original conventional unit, has the two transformer and the line uh, between uh, herself and the load. While instead uh, the, um, the other machine is just connected directly uh, to the load. So there is just the synchronous reactance, the internal reactance of the machine. So that means that uh, from an uh, electrotechnical point of view, the new machine is much closer and then uh, the machine will experience most of the load uh, increase to actually match the new current that is consumed by the load after the load step. So this is reflected also in the fact that the frequency will decline faster in the new machine. So the rotational speed, the, the machine will slow down more quickly compared to the other one. But in the end, uh, since both machines are uh, sensing the change in frequency, both machines will increase their power output. And after a few seconds, then uh, they will get, uh, let's say, synchronized, fully synchronized uh, again, and they will exhibit the same type of response. So the last uh, uh, step that we can do in our exercise is actually to create a plot where we uh, display the frequency in the three different cases for the same machine, just to see, uh, just to make a comparison of how different the frequency behavior is in the different situation. So let's just make a copy of the plot. We can just keep the frequency. And we want now to plot just for the same machine 
the frequency but in the different uh, cases so we need to be careful now to choose properly the different all calculation of the different study cases also in this case if we do the job properly then we should also rename the content or the name of this all calculation otherwise they are all called all calculation and that could generate confusion and then this one is the last of course then we have the conventional machine that's the same machine same variable of course we need to use three different colors to make it clearer and we have our uh, three cases actually so it's actually interesting to observe that uh, the first and the last case which are the one where we have uh, one machine and two machines the first one where the blue line one machine with a droop five percent the second one two machines the um, sorry the black one is the first case where we have one machine and five percent droop the blue line which is the third case is where we have two machines and ten percent droop and you will see that the steady state frequency is the same but the decline in the frequency is much different why because in the first case we have just one rotating machine while in the third case we have uh, twice as much the amount of inertia so that is affecting heavily the decline of the frequency on the other end we can see that uh, the difference between the first and the second case is of course remarkable in terms of steady state frequency because we have uh, in both situations one machine but with a different amount of droop that means a different amount of reserve but the very beginning of the dynamic it's very similar because we have uh, uh, the same amount of rotating inertia so we can also appreciate this better if we just zoom in it is clear that uh, the influence of the inertia is relevant at the very beginning of the simulation because afterwards the prime mover will start to increase the power output and so the rate of change of the frequency will be not just affected by the inertia anymore but also by the fact that uh, the generator is controlled and the power output of the generator is increased and that's about this exercise